Good evening, good evening, YouTube and other people. Let's return and um, to begin with, I put some life advice for you over there, which uh, presumably you will follow since people always follow life advice. And uh, let's get to it. So we're talking about this paper, which uh, well came out in 2020, so that is a very long time ago. Hence all the slow pokes, uh, slow pokes is me. And um, anyway, we're talking about this paper that I published with the, the other Danish researcher Helmut Nyborg, or as you call him, Helmut Nyborg. Um, it's actually uh, inspired by this uh, Scott Alexander post, um, even back also from 2020, and um, give yourself uh, gout for fame and profit. And of course, he doesn't actually mean you should do this, and this is not medical advice and blah, blah. Nevertheless, if you check history, you can find quite a lot of people who speculated about whether there would be some kind of positive relationship between gout and um, an achievement or like work ethic or, or at least uh, like eminence, genius, th this sort of thing. Um, the, the, the reason for this speculation is due to this uh, uric acid that is uh, the, the main cause of gout, at least that's the theory. Um, and uric acid uh, supposedly has some, some slight... Um, quickening effects like it's like a slight amphetamine or, or so uh, and uh, so theoretically people who have more of this should be kind of more into work ethics and more higher work ethics that is and get more stuff done and so on and there should therefore be a positive association between gout essentially excess uric acid and achievement and so so uh, you have all these old papers like for instance this Havelock Ellis who studied a bunch of British geniuses um, this study is um it's essentially a replication of Galton's um, study of eminence from the late 1800s, uh, British men and British whatever, eminent men and their success or something. And um, he has a section where he um, where he talks about gout and, and this hypothesis. And then you can find a bunch of later papers. And, um, and the problem, of course, is that, as Scott Alexander notes, is that like no study mentioned here like did the same test twice and it all looks very p-hacked and so on. And so we're really kind of in doubt whether it's real. Um, for those wondering what gout actually looks like, it's um, well, it's inflammatory arthritis, and um, it looks like this. So you kind of the immune system attacks your joints or, or something like this, and uh, you don't want that. Um, so uh, yeah. Anyway, so good stuff we have is that we have the Vietnam Experience Study. Uh, it's a study of American veterans. So these were people who were either drafted or enlisted by themselves uh, into the um, U.S. Army somewhere in the late 60s or early 70s. And um, they were then active there. Some of them went to um, Korea. Most of them went to Vietnam, hence the name of the study. So uh, the reason for this study from the military is that the military wanted to study the possible effects of going to Vietnam as opposed to serving somewhere else like uh, Korea or Japan or being stationed in, in East Germany or something like in Berlin, right? Um, and specifically because a lot of, back that time there was a lot of speculation about uh, getting ill, especially later in life, from exposure to Agent Orange, which was this like chemical spray they would, um, well, essentially gas the the forest with and um, kill the forest because the Viet Cong, the communist Viet Cong, were hiding in the forest, so you can't really see them with the helicopter. So you well you destroy the forests and then you can see them. Um, the interesting thing about this study is it has um, it has uh, blood measures, a lot of blood stuff, and this just includes. Unfortunately, not uric acid, but it does ha include a medical history uh, where people were asked for a long list of diagnoses. Have you ever been diagnosed with X? And this uh, list includes gout. And so um, essentially we have uh, a few people who were diagnosed with gout. 2% of the sample were diagnosed with this. And uh, since there's 4,500 people, you can work out that this is not too impressive a sample. Nevertheless, interesting. Um, the gout diagnosis does not really correlate too much with things it correlates with being overweight and it correlates with being older so the age thing is is uh, it's just due to having a higher chance like the older you are the more ch years you have to accumulate uh, diagnosis so that doesn't really mean anything we can see that gout is uh, is slightly negatively related to intelligence slightly positive to to income slightly negative to education and slightly negative to occupation but these values are all very small and, and probably uh, not even significant uh, so it seems that at least taken simply, gout does not really relate to achievement or intelligence in any kind of way. Um, these are the summary statistics. Um, nevertheless, we might be we might be wondering um, may, maybe gout um, 
is related to some of these. We just need to control for age or, or BMI or something. Uh, and so what we have here is uh, in the first model, we try to predict income and we have the gout diagnosis and we have these other things like age and, and intelligence. And we see that um, intelligence works well, like the correlation with intelligence or the beta standardized beta here is almost 0.4 for income. You have to remember this is an all male sample measured at age 38 or so. So that's why this value is, is a bit on the high side. Uh, um, the gout does not predict anything, so that there are no stars here. Um, and so basically it predicts nothing. Uh, it's also no interaction between uh, gout and intelligence. And if you do the same model, but you do, instead of predicting income, you predict uh, education, you also get nothing, gout predicts nothing, and the interaction of gout with intelligence also predicts nothing. And the same is true for social or occupational status. So occupational status is kind of an encoding you ask everybody what their job is. And once you've gotten the list of jobs, you have like 4,000 something people with jobs or whatever the last job had. And you give this list to some sociologist and they come up with like a rating scale, like physicians are higher social status than plumbers. And, and these are both higher social status than bus drivers. And, and so you can essentially assign an occupational status based on, on this kind of approach. Nevertheless, um, gout does not predict anything as far as we can see. Um, so maybe, so maybe this, uh, well, not maybe, quite plausibly, this this gout hypothesis was just uh, was just p hacking. Um, so when we were studying this study for review, um, one reviewer was asking that maybe maybe may doctors got it wrong. Maybe gout is not actually a good proxy for uric acid. Remember again, the hypothesis is that gout as such does not cause eminence. However, uric acid causes both eminence eminence and gout. And so um, for this. If, I, if you don't measure uric acid, but you measure gout, well, it has to be a good proxy. And so what we have here is the, um, is the standardized effect of gout on predicting uric acid. And you see, if you just do the entire population, uh, gout diagnosis predicts uh, uh, 0 0.6 uh, standard deviation higher um, uric acid level. Um, and, uh, but that pr explains not much of the variance, like 2% or so. Um, this is like a large national American data set. Um, if you control for like male and race and uh, and sex, uh, then having a gout diagnosis is still associated with roughly 0.4 higher levels of um, of uric acid levels. Um, and if you do various subgroups, then this value goes somewhere between uh, 0 0.26 and all the way to 0 0.41, uh, for 0 0.42. And so we can be pretty confident in our proxy that uh, gout uh, as a proxy for uric acid definitely works to some degree. And insofar as this uh, sample, you should probably see something. Uh, the power is, is probably not extremely high, but it is, uh, it is good enough. And um, so I think, unfortunately, the conclusion that Scott Alexander came to, which, uh, which was quite pessimistic that it's likely p-hacked, that's also the conclusion we come to, is that there's probably, there's probably no real relationship with uh, uric acid and eminence or either achievement in income and this sort of thing. So uh, trying to uh, n give yourself nootropics with this is, uh, is not recommended, at least based on these data. Um, that's pretty much all this study is about. It's just, it is the largest study ever on, on this hypothesis. And it, it tested a bunch of things at once and we sent we find nothing. So we think it's, uh, we think it's bullshit, um, unfortunately, since it would be a cool, um, cool marker. Uh, and then I just want to say, uh, finish that, uh, of course, if you don't already subscribe, you should subscribe to this uh, Substack that I've made and the growth has been, well, kind of nice. Um, so, well, you should join over there and I'll post it in the comments and uh, on to the next video.